The streets of New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago are filled with interesting characters. Here in St. Louis, we're a little more conservative, aren't we? But that could change. Bob Jamerson, also known as Baton Bob and the Ambassador of Mirth, has become as much a landmark of the Central West End as The Chase, Marilyn Plaza, and Left Bank Books. Though for some residents and visitors to the neighborhood, he has an acquired taste. There's a lot to Bob. But when you first see him, you wonder, huh? What people are, 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 are connecting with me is my spirit. They don't know anything about me, but they really like that happy spirit. And what it is, is part of their alter ego. And they all wish they could get out and do it. But our society has imposed so many restrictions on most of us. We don't have the courage to do it. <laughs> Bob, who in his other life owns a floral service, began making his two daily circuits of the West End, in part as a reaction to the national mood and his personal despair following 9-11. Life is too short. And after 9-11, that brought that right home to the center of my soul. I kept thinking, they could do this again or next week, and we would still not be ready, and nothing is out there to stop them. We would all be gone. And I think because of the reality of that sort of, like, made me reassess my whole value system. For the past year, photographer Susan Pittman has been following Bob, capturing his exploits on film. A recent exhibit at the Left Bank Bookstore drew huge crowds. Bob shares something with me. I take pictures of people, and I give the pictures to the people with no strings attached. And that's the same thing Bob does, but he does it for a smile. He walks down the street, and he gives everybody a smile, a good day, a moment. And that's what I do with my pictures. So there was sort of that thing that brought us together. He doesn't want people to think anything more than this is really fun to look at. I've made your day to anticipate what costume he's going to have. And I think he gets a lot out of that. you got your mind so focused on your work and, and maybe stressing out over something. And then all of a sudden you look up and there I am. And I take you out of that moment. It only takes a moment to take you out of it. And you regroup. In fact, that happened this morning. Um, I happened to be going to the medical center, and I saw him, and I felt good. I was, was kind of like he was exercising for me. <laughs> you never think that, like, a six-foot-tall man in gigantic platform heels and a little bun-hugging pink outfit is going to appear, but then he does. And uh, you can't help but smile. Keep it up, Bob. We love you. All you have to do is look. You don't have to buy anything. There, you don't have to do anything. It's just something that's there. And how often in life do we get anything like that? Philosopher, social critic, and fashion statement. I go to thrift stores, vintage clothing stores, uh, Salvation Army, and I buy pieces. And then I put things together so I can rotate them or alternate them. And the first costume I came out in was a red tutu with a red vest and a red Santa hat. And I was coming down King's Highway, cut over there on Maryland. As I'm coming around the fountain, a police cruiser pulls up, and he said, the two guys got out and, and approached me, and they wanted to know. And I was saying to myself, oh, goodness, I'm the first morning out, I'm going to get harassed by the police for having on a tutu. But this is what they said to me. They said, we were wondering if you would do us a favor. And I said, and I was glad to hear a favor. They weren't going to arrest. So, <laughs> and they said, would you be willing to pose with us in a group photograph for our precinct Christmas postcard? And I knew then that all was going to be well. What has begun as one man's baton-twirling personal journey has the potential of growing into a movement. I'm going to be working on classes over there in the park next summer. Next spring and summer, they're going to be baton-twirling classes, and then they're going to be marching around the park, and then they're going to be going in costume. So I would say by this time next year, there will be an uh, ambassador of Merce Truth. They'll be marching around the park every Thursday morning. <laughs> and Bob Jamerson, you're making America a better place. Oh, absolutely. And I feel so fortunate to be in a position to do it. <laughs>